What's up guys? Uh, today I want to go through just my song macros for my Q and time code base file. Uh, so yeah, I just want to go through this macro. All these are the same macro, just corresponding to the user variable. So I will go through that really quick. Uh, so I'm also going to uh, put the XML file in the uh, description. So if you don't feel like going through and having to recreate all this, it'll be right there. Um, with a little bit of info as well. So cool, let's get straight into it. Uh, first line of the macro is off page one through 99. Uh, that'll turn off all of your pages. Uh, so if you're over here, look at your pages, it'll just turn everything off up to 99 for me because I don't use anything past that. Uh, uh, second line will set your user variable to uh, current song is song one. Uh, it's a placeholder name, so you'll have to go through and change the name here. Uh, make sure you don't get rid of the uh, quotation. You're going to need to use those. Um, then here is selecting the page with that song name. So you'll have to rename the page right here to whatever that song name is. Um, oh, yeah. So then you'll also have to rename your executor uh, to that song. So I always just per page use the first executor as my song or my queue list. And then it'll select that so that it will be uh, usable on your like. Uh, on your handle, I guess, uh, that's next to like the crossfader. Uh, cool, right here. So that'll be, you're able to use that there. Um, cool. So next line is putting that fader at 100 and going to your mark queue, which I use as Q.5. Um, you can really use whatever number you want. I just like 0.5, so Q1 is actually Q1. Um, cool. So next we've got off time code one through, which is just turning off all the time code pools. Then we have uh, top time code current song. Uh, so you'll have to rename your time code pool. So down here, uh, you only really have to do this if you're doing time code, but I just use a different time code pool for each song. So yeah, so you can do that. And then selects that time code and goes that time code. Uh, next, I have assign views at view button 1.1, uh, view 101 at view button 1.1, screen 2. And then same thing, but for 133 at screen 3 at 1.11. So I'll show you what that means. Uh, basically, you'll go down to your views. I have a view specifically for screen 2 stored at 101. And then one at 133 for screen three. At 133, uh, that'll go here. And then 101 will go here. And I like to not uh, set these to like my variable. I do rename these so that they show up with the name, but I like to just recall them by what place they're in on my views because I never really change where this stuff goes, no matter what. So, yeah. Uh, you can use variables if you want, if you do end up moving your stuff around, but for this instance, I just don't want to have to do that. Uh, cool. So, the next thing in that macro is that it is going to just, basically, it's just view button 1.1, screen 2, view button 1.11, screen 3, and that is just pressing these so that it actually pulls those up because if you don't press them then it doesn't actually pull up the uh the view until you do press it and i just don't want to have to remember to press it every time or accidentally be on a different song and then be changing things or going through the wrong cue list or something so yeah uh, or more so, I'd be watching the wrong queue list because the other macros would be making stuff on the correct queue list. 
but I don't want to be watching the wrong keywords. So make sure you hit those. Uh, next, I will delete view button 1.2 and then assign macro 2 there. So that is taking this macro, which is just the next song, and putting it right here. And each time on each song, I have it do that so that I always have the next song. Uh, and that's that's where I do use the uh, user variables is so that I can reorder that, but uh, but make sure I'm recalling the same stuff every time. Uh, so yeah, just the next macro, it'll do macro three and so on and so forth. So I can just move these macros around. And that's why I don't have it do the variable. Instead, I just make it the next one so that I can reorder throughout the list uh, per show or whatever. So if something does change, all the information stored within the macros is correct, and the order doesn't matter that way, but more so it's just whatever order I put the macros in on my song. Uh, cool. So next, I basically just do... So that's just the next song macro on screen too. And I do the same thing, but for view button 11.40, which is down here at my user two list. It's just the same thing right here. And I also have one that's always song one that just takes me back to the first song. So then I also had, I have one that was my fixed page. Uh, I guess not, but my fixed page is also my punt page. So I'm actually going to rename that. And I'm going to... Actually, no, I'm not going to rename that because I also use variables there. So I'm actually going to just assign that right next to it. And then I'm going to change the appearance to cyan. Cool. All right, I'm happy with that. Uh. So yeah, cool. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it on the song macros. Uh, pretty much each song just renames things. And uh, as far as the views, it just takes the view from wherever I have it stored. And I always just keep each song stored in the same place. And don't worry too much about naming because sometimes that's the last thing I want to worry about is renaming stuff like that if I'm in a pinch. So yeah, uh, cool. So I don't think there's really anything else left. So if you enjoyed this video, you drop a like or a sub. And uh, again, I'll throw that XML in the description. And thank you for watching. See you on the next one.